You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. I find myself as a parent saying the words, oh God, back in my day, we had to do this. Oh, have you got to that stage? Yeah, have you? I am. And it's, it is sad. But you know what? Sometimes when you're trying to teach your kids a bit of mental fortitude, you just go, oh, come on, boys, honestly. You do it a bit tough, did you? Back in my day, we had to do this. Come on, mate. And they don't like it. As soon as you start a sentence with that, they're out. You've lost them already. But you know what? On Friday night, the boys play AFLX. It's a -a nine-a-side. They played at Gore Hill on the fake grass there. And the fake grass is actually... When I first went to the fake grass, Mm. Huey played his grand final. They said, you can't play on fake grass. It's actually awesome. Because you know what? It can rain. You can have 100 millimetres of rain and you can still have a kick on that. What about when you skid on it, though? Knee lock comes off in the knees, doesn't it? Take a little bit of skin off. Yeah. yeah. But it's not too bad. And anyway, it's a very popular oval in the area, and the kids play AFLX on there, but there's other people training around it. Mm. Two kids the other night. One would have been 12, the other one nine. They were two brothers. I was goal umpire for Lenny's game, right? So I'm on the yeah. I'm on the boundary line watching the goals the whole time. One would have been 12, one would have been nine. They ran laps for an hour. In their school uniforms, wow. and they ran the laps in their hush puppy leather black shoes from school. Oh. Like, it like, wasn't like they were in sporting gear. It yeah. was a Friday night. It was at five o'clock at night. Had someone told them to? Well, their pa- one of their parents, I couldn't spot the parent, but obviously they've been told by one of the parents, you need to go do your running on your Friday night, five o'clock in your school uniform. These kids ran laps for an hour. Because it sounds like... And pun- I was like, that is unbelievable. It sounds like punishment, doesn't it? Yeah, and it does. Can you imagine trying to tell your, my two yeah. boys to go and do that on a Friday night? Run for an hour. They would laugh at me. Do you know, I had, a, I had a situation yesterday where they'd been to a party and they'd come home with a party bag, which was full of lollies. Ted said, can I have another lolly? And I said, no. And he went, it's not fair. Oh, don't talk to me about fair, mate. Not in this house. Oh. I'll tell you what's not fair. It's the kid who doesn't have any lollies full stop because full stop because he doesn't have a house. He won't be getting any Christmas presents because he has to find food every day. Life's not You're fair, and that's that, not right. fair. Yeah, I, went I reckon ve- the guilt I've been going trip. very... You showed him a world vision ad or something. We, sh- we, d- we did look at some oh, of that stuff yeah. too. And I said, that's that's not fair. Life is not fair, and it never will be. But just realise the situation you're in, so don't... That's, and moan about not having another lolly. I'm sorry, but that's... I've said it, mate. That's gone next level to back in my day. No, back, <laughs> well, <laughs> no, back in my day, when he says I'm not happy with this hamburger, back in my day, you used to have to hang out the front of the butcher's shop and try and get the offcuts of the meats and run home before the dingoes got to me. Well, you know, I, that's what it was like. Back in my day, stories <laughs> are a badge of honour, though, aren't they? When you, when you get older, you yeah. actually look back and you're quite proud of them, going, yeah, that hardened me up. My dad used to take a gun to school back in his day. What, was he part of the Bloods or Crips? No, no, no. He did like a a service, like a cadets or something. Yeah. And they had air rifles. And you'd have to get on the the bus with your air rifle. And and, everyone thought it was a trumpet. And take it to school. No, everyone knew it was a gun. Isn't that incredible to see? Isn't that phenomenal? Yeah. When Dad was 13, he had um, his school uniform made and they had, um, they put a cigarette pocket. They said to him, what? side of your jacket would you like the cigarette pocket in? But did he smoke? No, but everybody <laughs> at that age did. It's just what they you were did. just having gaspers. Because uh, it was no big deal back then. Well, I guess, though, that's like vaping now. 13-year-olds who vape. Where would you like your vaping pocket? <laughs> but, yes, we don't support it in the same way you're right. Back in my day calls, if you've got any 13, 20, 14, get involved. Leonie and Heathcote, where, what did your mum make you do, Leonie? Um, we had a um, telephone. Mum put a lock on the phone, like literally got it put into the phone, and she had a key. So if we wanted to make a phone call, we had to give her 20 cents. That's hilarious. Oh, so good. So she would padlock the phone. No, it, there was actually a lock. She got a lock or bought a phone somehow, and there was actually a key lock to make the phone work. So Brilliant. she kept the key, and if we wanted to make a phone call, we had to go to her, give her a 20 cents and she would unlock the phone. Oh. It's the same as car phones when it used That's... to cost like eight bucks a minute and your parents would go off, yeah, even see... though it was only for emergencies. Leonie, when your kids are now asking for a phone, like, oh are, my you, God. are you just going, well, back in my day, God, I had to find myself 20 cents to make mm-hmm. a phone call. And couldn't move with every it. Time, <laughs> every time I threatened to disconnect their mobile phone, yep. well, the youngest, because the others do their own, but 
um, it's like the roll of the eyes. It's like, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. Mum. Well, there we go. Stacey in Borkham Hills, what did your mum make you do, Stace? Hi, guys. Um, the neighbour, the girl across the road, the neighbour, her and I would walk down to the local news agency and buy cigarettes in the lotto for the week. Oh, <laughs> amazing. How old were you? <laughs> Eight or nine. Oh, right. <laughs> Packet of gas was so, in a lotto ticket. So the person that ran the news agency knew your mum and just knew it was all right. It was fine. It was totally fine, and we got the change, and we were allowed to buy lollies with that change. So oh. we'd buy fads oh. and then walk home with our fads. <laughs> fads. I'm glad you said fads. And smoke your own lollies. That's, That's so right. funny. That is. I don't a... think we're allowed to do that now. But it's like when you used to go into this into the milk bar and you'd go, "Oh, what have I got? A dollar. Can I have two of those lollies?" Yeah. And you'd stand there in the cabinet full of sugar. Oh. Can I have one of those? How much is that now? Yeah. Okay. Can I have another one of those, please? Yeah. See, my boys are blue. My, blue their minds when they asked me what I got from the canteen at school and I said I'd always always get a pasty a chocolate milk and I'd get 50 cents worth of choc buds and they go how many choc buds would you get like 8 or Mm -hmm. 9 no 50 yeah full pack oh 1 cent each yeah don't worry about that why'd you have 50 choc buds for lunch yeah you would that is aggressive that is amazing huge (laughs) Gary welcome to the show what were you made to do as a kid Gaz well I'm just going to sort of try and trump uh, 50's little story there. Mm. So when I was at high school, my parents actually made me trek to and from school five days on a unicycle. Oh, on, a, oh, <laughs> on a unicycle? Were you part of the circus, Gary? Or It was a performing arts school, so I was part of the circus ensemble, but my mum turned around and said, I'm not buying you a push bike, you've already got a wheel. Oh, That's fantastic. That's hard, isn't great it? practice, though, getting up hills and stuff on the unicycle. Oh, there was one hill. It was probably a good 25-degree hill going up and down. Yeah, it's great if you want to join the circus. What about that Australian sprinter? He became one of our great sprinters of all time. I won't mention his name because I can't remember it, but what his mum used to do was he wet the bed. If he wet the bed, his mum would wash the sheets and he'd hang them outside the window where the neighbours could see, and he was really keen on the girl next door. So he became a great sprinter because on the way home, he would make sure he sprinted before she got home so she didn't see that his sheets had been washed and he'd wet the bed again. I that's think, a huge story. And that's how that we became faster. That's I, how he became a great well, sprinter. Your fitness I, would be I, up there. Every I, I day he would run home sprinting. <laughs> That's, and that's Matt true. Shervington. <laughs> what a load of crap. True story. True story. Tommy, yeah, but work I, out he, who that was. He probably had a bit of talent before that, I Doesn't would say. Doesn't matter. It wouldn't have been. If it wasn't for his bed wedding habit, he would never have become one of Australia's greatest who, sprinters who of all it, time. Tom? Yeah, it was a movie. Who hmm? was that? Yeah, what about a, who? I don't know if it was a true story. Oh. Deeks? Was it about Deeks? It was Michael Langdon. He yes. was. Yeah, Michael, the Loneliest Runner is the Never name of the movie. Him. And would Never sprint to yeah. get home so he wasn't embarrassed and the girl was keen on him as well. And he became one of our greatest champions. Same bolt. Well done. Great story. <laughs> You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper podcast.